Give Bless your holy name, my Lord. Precious. We give thanks and all it is of thanks and so forth your loving kindness, O oh God, in the morning and your faithfulness every night. Great is thy faithfulness. As we come again another Friday evening. Oh Jesus Christ. Oh God, you have given us an opportunity. Hallelujah to testify of your goodness. Talk of your greatness to us. Letting us know, Heavenly Father, more about you. Lord Jesus, have you have made yourself known unto Moses and your unto the children of Israel. We thank you to all those that are at the Zoom, who oh God, wherever they are. Lord Jesus, I pray that the word will go to them, Lord, something to strengthen them. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, oh Lord God, our own, we cannot do it. God, you are our refuge and our strength. You are our present help and trouble. You are the rock in the weary land and it's every the time of storm. Father, we thank you and we bless your holy name tonight. Hallelujah, remember your children wherever they are. My God Almighty, I pray a blessing upon them in Jesus' name. Hey, Lord God Almighty, I ask of thee, O Lord Jesus, be with us tonight. That is a revelation of the word and understanding. Hallelujah to Father, we thank you. Have a great God to us. Pray for us, Lord Jesus. Just access. We can both at the mercy seat for them grace right now. Take over, Lord. Take full control. Spread the hearts of your people. Those who would not, Lord, those who cannot make it, we pray for them and your children, wherever they are, doing the same things that we are, Lord. I pray for them. Take my blessing. Let's be thanks and praise unto you, O God. Jesus. Amen and amen. And let me say praise the Lord one more time and welcome. Bible teaching uh, on the road uh, Friday night. Lord, we thank you and for your goodness and for your people. Oh Lord, you have given a thirst. Lord, if they do know that are hungry and thirsty, for righteousness sake, I'll be filled. Thank you right now. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Yes. And so we are here tonight in looking at chapter one of the Acts. Um, and we know that for our convocation, that is coming up in a few days' time, uh, we know we are in the book of action. So, uh, here in my mind, that uh, we, I should continue to do something in the book of Acts because uh, we will be there for our whole time to keep. So we cannot so lay the foundation at the moment. Leading up to that, we'll be looking at the book of Acts. First, in the book of Acts chapter 1, 1 verse 8. Say, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Here we have Luke, writer of Acts. Luke, writer of the Gospel of Luke. God used this man, and the only Gentile writer, about the Bible, and I'm so glad that the Lord had used him, this physician. The profession was a physician, you know, but a doctor. And uh, the Lord had used him to put together the third of the gospel. Remember now, there's only one gospel. And the one gospel uh, is into five sections, four sections. Four 
the, the, the five the five passports are divided into Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. And that's where they are divided. So Luke, he was an apostle, and Mark was not an apostle. That was also an apostle. But they wrote gospel, but they wrote it as the Holy Ghost had led. So we have Luke writing about Jesus Christ as the Son of Man. Make Jesus universal to all mankind. Universal to all man. Now Luke wrote a friend, a friend called Theopolis and wrote many things to him about Jesus. Uh, told him a lot about Jesus. And Luke, who was one of the eyewitnesses, but he did search to and spoke to different people was uh, eyewitnesses, and the Lord allowed him to put the gospel of Luke together, and Jesus as the Son of Man. And so here we have to uh, not in Luke gospel, they are in the apostles, uh, the Acts of the Apostles. Luke also, the Holy Ghost allowed him to put that together for us. And just to say something about that, that Luke of writing um, from the book of for the book of and he was not hot. Uh, Luke got um, saved for the 16th chapter of the Acts. Uh, 16th chapter of the Acts. He was the man that when Paul wanted to go into Bithynia and the Holy Ghost forbade him to do it. Then he wanted to go into uh, Messiah, and the Holy Ghost told him no. And then he realized that the Lord was speaking, so he, he took a uh, time out, him and his traveling companions. And then he waited, and then he had a vision of a man over in Macedonia, Acts chapter 6. And then he had that vision, uh, and over in Macedonia said, Come over and help us. So then Paul said he was uh, assured that it was God now that believed it. So when it was time that Paul wanted to go back to Asia Minor, uh, where he's been preaching and teaching, and you know, Paul who had uh, sent as a minister to the Gentile world, and so where he, where he's, he's, he's a Gentile, he thought, well, oh, well, you know, I've already ordained and commissioned was the Gentile. Him, because he's been commissioned and have a, a mandate to do that, he still have to inquire from me. Uh, he doesn't stay about by himself. The Holy Ghost has to lead him. And as many that are led by the Spirit of God, by the Son. So here we are, Paul. I wanted to go back into it. When he got the vision of the man over in Macedonia, and they went then it was time for Paul to start his European ministry. And because he was always in Asia, so there are five continents, Paul was always in Asia, preaching and building up, and the Gentiles were being baptized and got saved. He thought, well, he would continue that area, but the Lord moved him across to Europe, and his first encounter place in Europe was Philippi. When Paul left now Asia, he came to Philippi, first place in Asia, and there he was in um, Europe, and there he was, and the Lord led him to a house, lady house, and the lady was the first convert, Lydia, uh, one of Celera Purple from, from Thyatira, from Thyatira, and she was a wealthy woman, and the Lord led Paul, and traveling companions to uh, Philippi. And there they started uh, his ministry for Europe. And we know that, you know, he got there and there were no synagogue. They had to go to the river or by the river every Saturday for prayer meeting. And Paul, now, while he was there, and Damsel was uh, a, a, a demonic um, spirit as she used to there be there things for the 
Roman generals that it was a Roman colony. And they were there, and she was there as a soothsayer. And she, when Paul, well, when, well, for times and times again, and one day Paul, to the spirit, so I thought, well, enough was enough, and he rebuked the spirit. And the Bible said, he came out of her. It was a, a male spirit that she had. And so Paul continued that journey, a second missionary journey. And Paul then was on his way from Philippi to Thessalonica to Berea to Athens and to Corinth and get up to and So Paul started, and Luke now is a chapter of Acts. When, uh, when it was written, because there you find Luke that there was about the uh, first person troubling. And suddenly Luke turned the writing into we. So it suddenly said, we did this. So he made it included himself with the, with the group of them. That's where he started. He became a very, very strong man of God. And he wrote the, the book. So, and also now uh, we are up in the book of Acts. Now uh, remember that we find Theophilus in, in Luke Gospel and Theophilus uh, I, was, I believe kind of person was a military in uh, and Luke and uh, knew him quite well and Luke and was well, the gospel to him and then told him Luke one, let me just hear up here. Luke chapter one, and then to it, um, which friend the upper us in chapter one. Said here, for, so for as much as many have taken in hand, set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the moon. Ito Luke was not a person. But he says, people that were eyewitnesses, and he began to collect information. And he says in, in, in verse 2, of the chapter, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word, then what he said now in verse 3, it seemed good to me also, having a perfect understanding of all things from the very first, write thee in order, most excellent Theophilus. So he's writing to a friend. He says, why is writing to a friend? In verse 4, that thou mightest know the certainty of those things which thou hast been instructed. In other words, he said, saying to his friend, Theophilus, need to know the truth. You need to get it from somebody who has the truth. But after he did his research, what he did was he then said to instruct uh, Theophilus. He saw in verse 5, he said, there was in the days of Aaron that he came up to him, a certain priest named Zacharias. So he began to speak to his friend Theophilus from about Zacharias and Elizabeth. Then John the Baptist Talking about Luke, it is good. And after the, uh, the gospel of Luke was together, then we know that the gospel, then what follows the book of Acts. Acts follows the, the, the gospel. Church then began in the book of Acts. Church, um, church not, not all the church, but the church, the beginning of the church was in the beginning of Acts. Acts. And we have to remember that Jesus then uh, came and he died. He spoke about the church in the 16th chapter of Matthew. And when he asked them and the, the opinion of who he was, and he said, two men say that I am the son of God. And some say that and the Baptist, one of the prophets, some say was Jeremiah, so on and so on. But then Jesus realized that uh, the people did not know who he was. 
So he turned to the apostles and said, who do you say? Who do you say that I am? They still didn't get the revelation yet of who Jesus was. But then while they were there, suddenly Peter said, I want the Christ, the son of the living. Jesus then immediately says, uh, Simon, son of son of Barjona, no, no, this call, call him Simon, son of Barjona. And flesh and blood does not reveal this unto you, but my father in heaven. So here we have uh, Peter got a revelation that he was the Christ. Jesus said, I give up on this one, but this revelation, but this truth, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So he gave Peter the keys to loose and bind what was in heaven, to sit and bind on earth, same thing in heaven. And so it is, Peter now had the key, man. and you know, under the Pentecost, was the key. Jesus then, after that, he went, and he uh, gave his life at Calvary, and rose again on the third day, and Jesus then spent some time with the apostles and showing himself to other people um, about the one that happened and how he died and the wounds in his hand. And they knew that it was him. And they saw him and men and the Hemios road and the women and he other to different days. And he showed himself after his resurrection. And then <clears throat> Meeting up with the apostle, now uh, this is where we are, and uh, in the book of Acts, chapter one, there now we have uh, Jesus, uh, apostle. It has not been set up yet. They knew about the church because, well, they were told about the church, but they never had of the church. And it so happened now, Jesus spent forty days after his resurrection, teaching and showing himself in fallible groups. And they could deny that it was wasn't him. Uh, so Jesus wanted to take off, and Jesus was believing. And so he now uh, empowering them. Well, when he's gone, uh, he himself would come into them as the Holy Ghost. So we have Acts right about the church and I was church and how it's been done. Here we are at home to look at uh, where it began. We must uh, go to the book of Acts. There's, there's no benediction in the book of Acts. So once, once the church began, the church continues. And we know that we know also that the book of Acts is about the ministry of two men, and that's Peter and Paul. And one to chapter 12 is the ministry of the Holy Ghost and ministry of Peter. And then chapter 13 until the end is the ministry of Paul, the Holy Ghost and Paul. Right? So we look at chapter 1 of, uh, of the Apostle. And in, here we have um, Luke writing to his friend Theophilus, and he said the former treatise. Chapter, have I made O Theophilus? Same friend he had that he wrote the gospel to, gave him gospel. Seems that here at Book of Acts, um, Theophilus have made up his mind, except what Luke had done for him. I believe so. But the former tree, uh, have I made O Theophilus of all this that Jesus? Began both to do and to teach. First thing that we can see here that like, he didn't just teach, he was an hot shot. Jesus always do the thing first and then teach it up. Great example. Those who want to, want to teach it without doing it. Now, but those are not teachers, those are people. Child. Happy and somebody else. So what we have to do is to do it. We are doer of the word. Then we can speak in action, speak in order than word. So when someone uh, forget what you say, what you do, they never forget it. 
tongue, sense be louder than word. And so it is. And Jesus, but Jesus began to do and teach. And we beloved ones, and the tried children of God, who God has called, commissioned us. Go for that. They must see our lifestyle. Who we are. Uh, Jesus himself said, when he was here, he said, he was the light of the world. And now, when he's gone, he said, oh, we will be the light of the world. City that set upon a hill. And I'll be here. So he said, let our light shine before men that they will see our good works and come to glorify our Father. So what he's saying to us, our light must shine. And now Jesus is born, so we are the light of the world. You know, if anyone seek him for God, anyone seek for salvation and find us, they should stop searching. Because whatsoever they're looking for is supposed to be manifested in us. But the same Jesus came because the Holy Spirit dwells in us. And then by our fruit that we shall know. Not by what we say, but here, our fruit, by the parasite, by the fruit, we can know them. And then Galatians 5.22, you know, uh, uh, that the fruit of the Spirit, segments of the Spirit, of joy, long suffering, deadness, faith, meanness, temperance, against such there is no law. So we have here, here we have Luke writing to Theopolis of the things that Jesus began both to do and teach. So two things we have to be doing while we're teaching. Verbal, a lifestyle. You know, that our lights will shine. You know, light is the destruction of darkness. We are in a dark world, uh, a world that needs Jesus. The world that needs the light shining in their soul. So we who has the light, we should make sure that we continue living a lifestyle like Jesus. Jesus, the ultimate lifestyle. So said here that the apostles of all that Jesus began both to go and teach until the day in which he was taken up. So the day that he was taken up. Uh, on the 40th day after his resurrection, came to the point of his ascension. Now, one of the things about the, the resurrection is, nobody saw Jesus when he resurrected, but he was in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. While he was there, and his phone was wrong, in position, blocking him on going, seal him. So while he was in that tomb, they expect that he should be there, but he hadn't left the word that he would be down there for three days and three nights. And they matched about that also. Matthew chapter verse 40 says, and that's those in the will's belly. Three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be the earth. See that those words, um, as it was, so it will be. As is uh, Word that is um, historic and as and so is prophetic. And so understanding scripture in that way, as it was, so it is. If you want to really have a great understanding of the word of God, as and the soul, the word control the past and the future. We understand the word of God. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so shall the man, son of man, be. Was is then lift up the serpent in the wilderness, coming from Egypt. He said, as old Moses lift the serpent in the wilderness, so shall the Son of Man. Jesus is the Son of Man. So that had happened historically with Moses. Jesus came prophetically and he's done it. Now, uh, also, so in that word, as and so, really helps us to get to the word. He says, as, as, as Noah, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be. Past, 
which is history, so shall it be prophetic it's to come. All right, so when you see those two words meeting in the same verse, in looking back and looking forward. So here we have in verse two, back to our text in chapter one, it says, until the day in which he was taken up. So 40 days have come. And uh, he said, Jesus was taken up the 40th day. After that, he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Uh, the day in which he was taken up, he spoke to the apostles. Final meeting with them. And he spoke to them. And let us read that verse again. Until the day in which he was taken up. After that, he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. But Jesus chose the apostles. And John, the last 12, and one of them had still gone. He still lose one. Do that still gone. And he said in verse 3, to whom also he showed himself alive and after his passion. Many infallible proofs being seen of them how many days? 40 days. And speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So Jesus then began to teach and explain um, a lot of things here. Uh, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs. You know, Jesus' passion, passion week, uh, Jesus Christ suffered and died, and now after his passion by many fallible people, being seen, so the same Jesus will happen to him during passion, crucified and died, he is the same one now, uh, being seen of them 40 days and a lot of people minds must have you know, some high went in hiding imagine Pilate and Herod and um, all those men who saw him and knew that he died, knew that he was on the street, walking again, showing himself. After three days, Jesus said he will be back. And he came back, you know, and people saw him, you know, and they knew without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, this is him because he's got the nail prints, he's got, he got everything. And they knew it was him. And speak, and the Bible said, to whom also he showed himself alive. After his passion of what of the passion week come to him by many infallible proofs. Proof that are such that nobody can deny it. Uh, can't deny it. Being seen of them 40 days, they saw him still walking around. And it must be something. They put him in that sepulchre, seal it open, that's the end of it. Uh, and then put soldiers to watch it. Was, watch. The sepulchre that nobody could go in and interfere because they went to Pilate and said, this deceiver said that he will be back within three days and just make something may happen. Uh, and the, the, the apostles, uh, someone might steal him out there and they would say that, you know, he's written. But let us put some soldiers there to watch the sepulchre that nobody should, uh, that nobody takes him away. So obviously, a pilot gave them what gave them what they needed and they sealed it the the, the, the uh, sepulchre doors. Um, you not own all their it takes a whole army to ship that stone. He gave his stone because they're certain they got him in that sepulchre. But on the third day he came out, as he had said, and he said, um, he was seen up there forty days. And speaking of the things, pertaining. so he was there teaching and speaking about the things about the kingdom of God, uh, the kingdom of God. Because you know, the king, Jesus is from heaven, kingdom of heaven, and he's God. Uh, so he came down to the kingdom of man. And he's in, in the kingdom of man now, speaking to them about the kingdom of God. And so it was an up and verse four said, and being assembled together with, so the, this word assembled, saying they came together with some kind of union, um, last meeting together. Uh, and uh, when you have something like this, 
being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. The promise of the Father now was that he said, do not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. Yeah? The, the Father had promised them comforter would come. All these things will happen. So the Father had promised them um, which saith he, ye have heard of me. But Jesus said, I have told you, you have heard it of me, the promise of the Father, and what the Father had said. And he said, you have heard. So he said, wait for it. Yeah. Wait for the promise of the Father. And this is where a lot of believers wait. And they have tiring service. They said, no, it's waiting, sir. Tell them to wait. Um, but, you know, one has to wait until he gets the Holy Ghost. You can seek God for it and wait till he gets it. Never stop seeking God for the Holy Ghost. Why without the Holy Ghost? And be baptized in Jesus' name. But if you haven't got the Holy Ghost, and time comes when rapture takes place, you know, you'll be left behind. So you need you need the Holy Ghost. That's like what was in Jesus. But the ascension, so you have the resurrection, Come back as a surface level and hurt, but then to go to uh, the kingdom of them, you need to get uh, uh, the Holy Ghost for your ascension. And Jesus Himself demonstrated, and they saw it. And the year Luke could write about it. He said, Wait for the verse four, wait for the promise of the Father, which said, He, you have heard of me. Jesus told him about the but they could not understand one time who was the father. And, and I must say, you know, they, they heard the, talking about it. And Jesus was about to go away. And God become Father. Because we talk about the Father, but just the Father that it suffices us. So it is that Jesus said to Philip, Philip. So long time you are with me. I believe if I was three years, maybe three years. And he said, You have not known me. But Master, you only see me. But Jesus said, If you see me, you see the Father. For I and my Father are one, not two. Both of us are one. He said, For I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. So don't look for two individuals, look for one. And the one is me. Jesus is the only man on this planet who came down from heaven, born here, and the kingdom of man, as our kid man redeemed. And he had two natures. Only man with two natures. He has a divine nature and a human nature. When you see him, you see the father and you see the son. The son means the flesh of him. You see him. You don't see two people. That's why Jesus said, if you see me, you see the Father. I and my Father are one. But you and I couldn't say that. Yeah, you and I, Father, said, my Father is two of us. And your Father and you is not two. So you can't say that. Only God could say that because he had a dual nature and his God manifested in the flesh. Father, mighty God. Be. And so it is. He said, the promise of the Father which ye have heard of me. Father spoke to the Son. Um, you know, because when in eternity, before God manifested himself, the, the Son was in the Father. It was not the Son making of a Father. The Father became a Son eh, to lead many sons into glory. Uh, so we have now Jesus Christ, his Father, same time. Human and divine. And when we pray, we pray to him. And, and because Jesus is our dead man redeemer. Jesus he is the comforter. Uh, Jesus is our great high priest. Up in heaven. So when we pray, when we need, we call him by his name. He left the name with us, the name with power. When we say Jesus, heaven opens and comes to our rescue. Eh? Because that's where our Redeemer now 
uh, his body, but he came back into this earth and is in us. Holy Ghost, Comforter. Huh? And he would send the Comforter in his name. And so you have here in verse 5 of chapter 1. So here we have Jesus continue to speak and open their understanding even further, particular stage, and being assembled with them. They were together. Verse 5 tells us that. For John truly baptized with water. And baptism, that's John the Baptist. But he shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days. Not many days. So you notice that when anyone is being baptized in Jesus' name and has not received the Holy Ghost, that has been not many days in. Not many days in. Now, some people get many weeks, many months, uh, many years to receive the Holy Ghost. But the Bible says, Jesus says, not many days have they baptized with the Holy Ghost. Not many days hence. The Holy Ghost. And that's a proof. And if I will live in testimony, I would have for that. I was baptized on Sunday night. And by Tuesday night, within three days, I received the Holy Ghost. And God is a wonderful God. So I can testify the word of God that fulfilled the body. So I was baptized at 9.30, Sunday night. And by Tuesday evening at 7.30, I received the Holy Ghost. It's good to even know you're born again did more than your physical birthday, the 13th of December, 1987. Receive you. 15th, I receive you. It's a wonderful God we see. So the Bible speaks, and we can testify. I'm sure many more people can testify. Some people will get the Holy Ghost by the next day. Some people get the Holy Ghost by the in the baptism pool. Huh? Be baptized, they got the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. Lift them out of the water. So, it's the word of God is truth. That's what he said. He said, Jesus said, Jesus speaking here in verse 5 of chapter 1. He said, For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. So, Jesus speaking with them still on the 40th day. Now said, verse 6 says, when they therefore were come together, now they come, come together now, him and all of them, they asked him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? Now they were always wondering about the kingdom because what happened to the Jesus disciple and the Jewish people? Jesus came as a redeemer. Jesus came to save mankind, save soul. But they were more interested in Jesus and the Jewish people receiving a kingdom. Kingdom was always, and this was not something that they should not expect because the Bible, God promised them to the prophets that time is coming, the kingdom will be there. He promised David that David would have a son, and David's son, uh, the king will, will be a king over the, the, the Israel, or the kingdom of Israel. And so it is that that has not yet fulfilled because Jesus came as the son of David and he came with a threefold office, prophet, priest, and king. And while he was on the earth, you know, it's, it did his, uh, the threefold office thing, he started with the um, prophet. Jesus was a prophet. And he, what the prophet does is to bring God to the people. And Jesus was here in and what he was in his chair of his ministry. Then Jesus was healing people. He was teaching about the kingdom of God. He was, you know, I mean, he hoped the highs of people. And, you know, the Bible testified of him before he came that the one that was coming would be able to raise the dead, cleanse the leper, and hope the highs of the blind. Jesus fulfilled all of those things. And Jesus was here and his and choosing the people that he wanted uh, to teach. And here he is now, still, still teaching them on the 40th day when he's about to leave. So Jesus hasn't stopped teaching them. Uh, and in verse 6 says, When they therefore will come together, 
they ask of him saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom of you? Of all they were interested in. But Jesus said in verse 7, that they were after a kingdom. But then Jesus said unto them, it is not for you to know the times of the seasons. And that's why you find that Paul wrote to the Thessalonians, I think it's chapter 5, 7, of the times and seasons when there's no need for me to write unto you. Paul had something different in his mind, but this came to me, he says, and he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times and seasons which the Father has put in his own power. What he, God, has put in his own power is not for man to know it. God, there's a season at a time when God will do certain things. And when Paul begins to write about uh, coming up the Lord and what we should look for, he said, but at the times and seasons, there's no need that I write and he told very well uh, that the Son of Man coming. And so it is that Jesus speaking and says, the times and seasons, they were hard to want to know, but he said, well, the Father has put those things in his own power. I was talking about power. Um, we need to understand power here. We have the divine power of God, and the Lord put that in his own power to deal with that. But then he, in by verse 8, he said something here that um, got my attention very strong. And he said, but ye shall receive power. He said to them, after I said the Father has put power in his own hands, he turned to them and said, but ye shall receive power. When? And he said, power come up. And then he says, after that, the Holy Ghost will come upon you. He said, well, the Father put the power, his power in his own hand. But then he says, after that, I said, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost will come upon you. So there's a power. And then when I begin to realize that you have power that man has which to give you an ability to do things, and you have strength, and you have force, those are power that man has. Force, man has strength, and man has ability to do things. And that's not God's power. That's man's power. So he said, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So if you receive God's power, it is not, not mixing with your power. Our power is to just keep us going and get strength. But then with the power of God, he said, after that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you and ye shall be witness unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So here we have, when we begin to look at power, uh, we begin to understand, you know, in, even in Haggai, um, when um, the Lord uh, spoke to uh, Haggai and, and, and Zachariah, and, and when they decided to stop building the Lord's house, and they, the Lord sent a word to the prophet, and said to them, it's not by might, nor by power. But you see, he was talking about his power. Because they went to Egypt and, and other countries seeking political power. And they were seeking a military might from, from Egypt. That's why the Bible says, not by might, nor by power. It says, by his spirit, to a military might and political power. Can help us, and we can't do that either. The children of God, our strength cometh from the Lord. Uh, we don't lose your political power, nor military mind. No, we can have all the soldiers on this earth uh, fighting for us. That military mind, that you can equate that with God's mind. God, God might is the power of God, uh, Holy Ghost, uh, and so it is. And we sing the song sometimes, it's not by my, not by power, but by my spirit. But might and power, we're talking about his might and power, talking about military force and, and political, political 
um, for some military might. They wanted to use to fight. God stopped them and said, no, you can't use that. You have to use Jesus himself. And so it is, he said, um, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost will come up. Come up. And, and ye shall be witness unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria uh, unto the uttermost part of the earth. Because they can't go witnessing with their own power. No. They can't go out there doing uh, things as we're working for God with our own power, our own strength, and our own force. We need the Holy Ghost. Amen. If we're going to talk about he going out there. So he says here, it is not for you to know the times and seasons which the Father had put in his own power. So he knows when to get us the Holy Ghost, to get the Holy Ghost. So he said, but he shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. He'll have the right power for, and to witness. And he said, well, and ye shall be what witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the other part of the earth. And without the Holy Ghost, he's using his own strength and he's using his own force and his own ability. And that man needs to get the Holy Ghost. They're speaking about them going out to ministry and when he's gone. So the Bible said in verse 9, and when he had spoken these things, when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up. He began to ascend eh, with them, but he began to ascend. And a cloud received him out of their sight. And he went up. Eh, he went up. See him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. And I said there were two men. No, a lot of things say two angels. No, the Bible didn't say that. The Bible said two men. There are two men that follow Jesus right from his resurrection all the way through. And that, and these men, uh, you see that they represent Israel men. And these men, and uh, Moses, you find that Moses and Elijah. Now, Moses died years ago, uh, many, many uh, hundreds of years ago, before Jesus. And then Elijah didn't die, he flew over death. And so, you know, these two things going to happen at the resurrection is that um, going to have death, dead, been raised. And Moses who died, and remember now, God told him to go up to Mount Nebo and die. And Bible say he was not sick. His eyes were not dim. Uh -huh. Not dim, but he had to come out of it. And when he went up there, uh, and then Elijah now passed the Jordan with Elijah, and the chariots of fire of Israel came and picked him up and took him up gone with him. So he flew over dead. So at the resurrection, two things going to happen. Going to have dead saints coming up. Um, Moses represent them. You also have saints that are alive. Change. Like when Elijah going up, the chariots, he will change from mortality to immortality and gone into heaven. These representative men, Moses and Elijah, following Jesus all the time, so you notice that when Jesus then in his ministry to Peter, James, and John upon the Mount of, of Transfiguration and was transfigured before them. And when they saw this great light, they were so taken aback with it that Peter said, uh, it was good for us to be here. Let us meet Peter Monocles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And what has happened? Christ came out from heaven and says, this is my beloved son. Uh, in whom, not with whom, in whom I am well pleased, hearing him. 
And so you could see Jesus then and then goes on the line. And by telling it to Revelation chapter 11, you see two witnesses again. Uh, traveling Israel, traveling Israelite men they're representing us. You see them preaching to chapter 11 to, uh, to the, the people of uh, Israel in, in, when, when they when they are uh, making their manifestation in chapter 11 of Revelation. And they preach, and the Bible said, who are these witnesses? And the hands of the scripture was, these had power to show us that it rained not in the days of his prophecy. Who did that? Elijah. Shut off the prophets with Ahab. Shut off the, um, the, the rain. When Ahab would not live to write, Ahab was married to Jezebel. And it was uh, Israel's darkest hour with idolatry and paganism. And uh, Elijah went to the king and told him, it shall neither rain nor dew. Uh, for these three and a half years, according to my word, he said, he left. And Israel was in trouble. Um, and it was shut off for three and a half years. Uh, three and a half years. Told him that. And so it is Moses and him was up there and the motor truck. And um, transfigure, and when Jesus Christ was transfigured. But when these apostles woke up, woke up, up from their, their days, because they were a bit hazed, and then they, and then Moses and Elijah disappeared. And, and, um, and so it is that although Moses, um, wanted to see God at one time. And the Lord said, Moses, you can't see me and live. Yet Moses was up on the moment of configuration with Jesus and Peter, James, and John. And so it is when he has spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. These two men present Moses and the Lord. Which also said, ye men of Galilee, this is what they said to them. That were gazing at Jesus going up. Jesus was moving up into the heavens. Remember now, he didn't have any wings like an angel. He didn't have a, 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 an embrace on. It was no countdown, seven, six, five, five, lift up. No. Just because that, and that no it, it just began to ascend and defy gravity and go up, sit and gone through the heavens, the clouds and gone. And they stood there gazing. And they looked because, you know, Jesus, their leader, you know, when they think everything had settled and everything was here and he's back with them now after his resurrection. 40 days now, he will take off and gone into the heaven. So they had, there was their gazing, gazing. And so uh, the two men, the men, two men that uh, dressed in white, Moses, Elijah, said unto me, to them, but ye men of Galilee, verse 11, why stand ye gazing? Why stand ye gazing up? into heaven. They asked him a question. Why stand ye gazing up into heaven? He said, this same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. He shall return in like manner. In other words, he shall come back and the same Jesus as he goes shall come back in like manner. Like manner means the visible and personalness he should see. Because he went away not to stay and is coming back again. So let not the heart be done. If you believe in God, believe also in me. For in my father's house, there are many mansions. If it was not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will receive you unto myself. And so, uh, the men disappear and 
the commandment was that they should go up to Jerusalem and wait. And that's what he said to them. Go up there and wait until you have endued with power from an eye. So Gal Galileans, they wait. Now, one of the things why they were there waiting, and we, because when, remember now, when it was time for Elijah to take off from Elisha. And so when they go over the Jordan, fire of fire came down, and fire was too hot for Elisha. He jumped back, and it was just about right for Elijah. He jumped in and gone up into the heavens. Now, if you notice there that Elisha wanted something from Elijah. And he said, has. And he says, he wants a double portion of his power. He says that you ask for a very hard thing. <coughs> Excuse me. You ask for a very hard thing. But if you can see me when I go, then you could have it. Right? So he was there. But when the, the chariot takes up, and he looked up, and he looked up and wait and watch and begin to cry, my father, my father, my father. Something came from uh, um, Elijah. Elijah dropped the mantle. And he picked up the mantle. And then, Elijah, no, remember, he wanted to do double portion of his anointing. And so you find that Elisha now to go back over the Jordan. The sons of the prophets were watching to see, oh, well, we know that Elijah has got power. Let's see if Elisha has got any power now. Elijah is gone. And so it is when Elisha got to the, to the river. And when he got there, he looked up and he didn't say, may the God of Elisha. He says, may the God of Elijah. You know, um, and he smote the waters with the mantle and the waters back up and give him way to go over back over the other side and where he was before. And the sons of the prophet saw it and they testified, says, they sure now there was a certainty that the God of Elijah, the anointing was upon Elijah. And he, he did 14 miracles. Elijah did. While Elijah did seven, double portion. You can see about the mantle. He got the mantle. And so he could do now what Elijah do, did. Elijah could do it. Here we have the 12 of us. But it's 11. Looking for Jesus going up, but looking for something. Like how Elijah looked for something to happen. They knew something happened with Elijah and Elijah. Jesus left them and going up. And Jesus ascending up into the heaven, the ascension. And so happened. He, he didn't drop anything. But he had told them what to do. So go up to Jerusalem and wait. Uh, because they wanted something. Because Jesus had gone. And they didn't have nothing. So Elisha had the mantle. And now when they got up to Jerusalem and was waiting. And the fifth day, day, ten days later. That was Pentecost, the Feast of Pentecost. While they were there, up there waiting, and they're waiting and praying, suddenly they heard a sound from them, as of a mighty, mighty rushing wind. What happened? The mantle was coming back. The mantle was coming for them. And then they heard it, and they, when they describe it, they say it was like a sound of a rushing wind. Rushing wind, you know, coming with force and power. And they said they saw something. There was a manifestation of fire sat upon every one of them had fire, tongues of fire. And third thing happened, there was an utterance. They began to speak in tongues as the Holy Ghost gave them utterance. So the mantle has come back. The mantle. Is back as they gaze to receive. And thank God, that's not just Elisha, they get it from Elijah. He get it from Jesus, the apostle get it from Jesus. He's still 
doing that now. So any man that's in this planet, any any person is in this planet, so desire heaven, the mantle, the Holy Ghost will come to believe. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Believe it. Not just believe, believe it. Continues to believe. But they that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. And so it is. We have got the mantle. Every man with the Holy Ghost has got the mantle. Right? So we now don't go out. The text is pointing to us that we do not go out with our own ability, our own strength, and our own force. Can't win so like that. We have to have the Holy Ghost. And it's not by military might, not by um, power, but it's by God's Spirit. So what we need is the Holy Ghost. And so while they were there at the upper room, the Holy Ghost came and the mantle that they looked for. So Peter on the day of Pentecost, no, he picked up the mantle, preached the first message in this church. <laughs> it was Jesus doing it, you know, in him. Yeah. And he, you could say like the sons of the prophets that were watching, uh, what was happening to Elisha? We can say of a certainty, of a certainty, the power of God is upon us. So the mantle has come back. Isn't that something, beloved one? Got the mantle. Man without the mantle, they do a lot of things, but it's not by my might, not by my power, but it's by God's spirit. Military might and political power can't do it. My ability can't do it. My strength can't do it. My force can't do it. The text, the Holy Ghost. Eh? The church began at that time. Eh? Holy Ghost began. The church of Jesus Christ began at that point. The Holy Ghost came in chapter 2. And the Bible said, let me just continue here. Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the Mount called Olivet, that's Mount Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room where abode both Peter, Paul, and James, John, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon Zelotes, and Judas, the brother of James. One missing, that one missing, he just hung himself. And he was a, he was a one of the members, one of the numbers, the Bible. And he hung himself and went to his own place. Verse 15 says, And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said that they need to um, bring back the number to 12. But God didn't tell him to do that. That was something he decided to do. Uh, because all the apostles here were told by, by, by Jesus himself. You know, and, the, and remember now, uh, the apostle that Jesus got 11, he made up the 12. There was a man named Paul on his way to Damascus, arrest. He had a letter from the high priest, and he was an attorney for them to The Sanhedrin council used this man uh, because this man hated everybody that talked about Jesus. But on his way, as he journeyed, he saw a light above the brightness of the sun and heard a voice calling him by his name, throwing him to the ground. And he said, Lord, uh, what must I do? He has to go on down to Damascus and someone will tell you what to do. Paul was the one who make up the 11, 12. Paul always say that I was the last of the apostles to come in. Made the 12 of us. said, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, not by the will of man, but by the will of God. And so it is. They now up there, and what happened is in chapter 2, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all together in one place. Day of Pentecost. Pentecost was a feast day. It was also a festival day. The Holy Ghost came. Seventeen nations were there. And while they were there, all received the Holy Ghost. So he said, yeah, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, 
they were all with one accord in one place. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. No one escaped. Everybody had to get a touch of the Holy Ghost. Uh, Holy Ghost getting them. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And it sat upon each and every one of them. And I've always liked to say this. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. All filled with the Holy Ghost. Not some of them were filled. All filled. It's the same Holy Ghost we have today. The same sound we have. Uh, many are being born filled with the Holy Ghost. And we need the Holy Ghost to go to heaven. And you know, while they were up there, there's a lot of false teachers, false doctrine and false prophets would tell, want to tell you, you don't need no Holy Ghost. And because that was the time it hasn't come back. It's a lie. Now the Holy Ghost is the spirit of Jesus, resurrection power. Because when the trump of God is sound, I say every dead in the Christ, every every dead in the grave shall hear it. But only those who die in Christ shall rise. The rest of the dead live not again until a thousand years later. Huh? That's what's going to happen. But only those that die in Christ. And if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, they that sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. So resurrection is very important. And without the Holy Ghost, we can leave the certain level uh, and come to space. But we have to meet him in the air. Uh, and without the Holy Ghost, we can't move. My encouragement to any man, hear my voice tonight, and not yet be saved. Oh, you like to go back now and pray. And you give the Holy Ghost. I ask God to save you. Uh, you need to be baptized in Jesus' name. Not just in way, but follow the Bible. Uh, the apostles' way. It has to be done how Jesus gave it to the apostles. There are many religions and many people out there. But let's get back to the word of God. That was okay. Word of God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we always talk about Paul going down to Berea after leaving Thessalonica. And when the, when he preached to the people, they listened attentively and they gladly received the word. But they didn't just receive the word and take it to Paul. But they went home and read the books to see if it was so. And when they read the school and they found that Paul's message was right and the church was manifested in view and all then preaching Jesus uh, and the the church was gone by the time he gets down to Athens and by the time he gets to Corinth even Thessalonica because uh, they, they, they were from as Paul was about a king as Jesus coming and the people you but if Caesar heard about another king coming, he would have sent two legions of, of, of soldiers up there, and it would be what he would have done. But Mr. Paul decided to leave because uh, wisdom said he would But Timothy, Silas, they, they were still there, and they continued. And within three weeks, church in Thessalonica, you know, Paul still corresponded with them. Paul write first and second Thessalonians, some of the things that he had written, uh, some of them take it the wrong way. And there was also Paul's teachers was saying Paul had said this and Paul had said that and that wasn't so and it wasn't gonna be Paul had to write second Thessalonians to stop that error and get people to know the truth. And because today you have false prophets, false teachers, and false prophets, but the Bible is right every time. So let us get back to God's word because that does not change. It is, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Uh, the word of God is here to help and to guide us where we need to go. And so the church began here in Acts chapter 1. That's the beginning of the church. 
and the church and you know, writing the book of Acts tells shows us how the church spreads all over Israel, all over Judea and Samaria, and the church still moving across the planet. Uh, Holy Ghost, they are in this country, they are in the United Kingdom, for the West Indies, for the Canada, you got it from the United States, Paris, the Holy Ghost is we are saving you. And any man need to be saved, you know, just ask. Find the apostolic church, the apostles, huh? and then you find that you are at the right here. Because there are a lot of us teachers around, and Jesus said, Many shall come by name, saying, I am saying I am Christ. You know what that means? People come in saying they have, they have got the anointing. They're using those words, I've got the anointing. Anointing of people who wants to be saved, but then uh, they must not just believe in anything. You need to get to the word of God and find out what do you believe? Uh, do you believe in baptism in Jesus' name and receive him? I know what they believe. Some say they believe there are two gods. They don't believe in three gods. So don't believe there's any God at all. Uh, but they buy him, but there's just, Jesus said, you come after him, and you first believe, eh? come. And if any man needs him, let him first, in my himself, take up the cross and follow him. In the name of Jesus. So here we have uh, chapter two. Paul now became the first of the preachers, not Paul, Peter, become the first of all the preachers, preach a message to for but by the church, by the church. But the church becomes you now uh, the, the vehicle. I've always used that term, the vehicle that God uses to save mankind. So the church is there, the gospel is being preached, and as to believe, the commission that we receive is to go ye therefore, teach all nations, all nations, baptizing them in the name of of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Now, when you say that, it doesn't mean that you're going to baptize in Father, Son, Holy Ghost. A Father is not a name. Son is not a name. and Holy Ghost is not a name. They are titles. Huh? But the name is Jesus. So they are Pentecost. Notice that when Peter baptized, they re because they didn't know what to do when they heard the speaking in tongues. And, and they said, how hear we every man? In our own tongue, we were born. Uh, these men are joking uh, with, with new wine. Peter said, We are not joking. But this was that which was prophesied by the prophet Joel that in the last days, God is going to pour his spirit upon all flesh. When they asked, What shall we do? Peter said, well, This is what you do. Now, repent, every one of you, and be baptized in the name of of Jesus for the remission of sin uh, and, you wish, and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Okay. Now, that's what he said to them. Uh, because when Jesus in said, Matthew 20 and 19, gave them the commission, they understood what Jesus said. And if you baptize a man, anyone in the name of the Father, you have to find the father name. You know, if you post a letter to somebody and, and, the, and the mailman is the letter of and put a name, pay father, which father would you take that to? Yeah? How many millions of fathers and one letter? You can be confused. But if the letter have a name on it, then know exactly pay Jesus. Yeah? Got a name. Son is not a name either. Son is a title. Holy Ghost is not a name, it's a title. So we have to baptize the believer in Jesus' name. Yeah? Baptism in Jesus' name. Repent, every one of you, and be baptized in Jesus' name. In Acts chapter 1, you find that Jesus mentioned about John the Baptist. And he said here that John also was baptizing. And John baptized uh, in verse 5, for John truly baptized with water. 
But see the baptism you know, of the Holy Ghost. But ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Not many days hence. So water baptism. The answer to a good conscience in Jesus' name. You have to be buried. Because every man that born on this planet. Born on this planet. Every person born in sin. Um, because sins of Adam's sin. And Adam all die. Because of one man disobedient, sin enters into the world and death by sin. As of one man obedience, many been made righteous. Jesus came, proved himself in human flesh. God came to earth to save mankind. Okay? And then born, came legally. Okay? Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I am the door of the sheep. The door opens to God and to us, and to Jesus. Uh, is the entrance to him. Uh, Jesus Christ came to save him. And he gave his life. Oh, it's Jesus did. On the way to Calvary, he went, uh, suffered, he bled, and he died. He was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquity, the chastisement of our peace was upon him by his stripes. And we are healed. Jesus came. Uh, and did it. He purchased us with the price. Sin demands the highest price. Uh, the blood of Jesus Christ came and bought us back by his blood. And we are saved by grace truth. So if we are to be saved, you have to do even the finished work at Calvary. Propitiation is the term that is used. Eh? In other words, that Jesus Christ was led to the cross where we were guilty. Yeah, he did it for us. Yeah. He did it for us. He came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. So Jesus Christ justified us. The act of justification, meaning that we were guilty yeah, and we need help. But Jesus then went to the cross and nailed our sins to it. So what we have to do, no matter what age we are in now, no matter who we are, we have to, got to accept that by faith. We are saved by faith through grace. Grace is, grace is God. Huh? Faith is to believe. Mercy is because we are guilty. When you ask for mercy, you are to give. Yeah? By grace, we are saved. Mercy of God. Yeah? Grace and mercy. So we thank God for what he has done. Made the way for us, yeah. and that we can continue to be saved. Peter said unto them, Repent, every one of you, and be baptized in the name of Jesus. The Bible said there are three that, that bear witness upon the earth, three that bear witness. What is the three? The water, the spirit, and the blood. The water is in the world already. That's where you baptize people in the watery grave. Eh? Baptized them. And then baptized them because we are dead. We born, sin, born in sin. Death. We have to be buried. And then while we use the name of Jesus, blood is in the name. So you have to use the name because if we don't use the name, the sin still remains. I sin would still remain. But the name of Jesus, and then he says that the blood is what he used to purchase us. And then he is the spirit. The spirit is him. So you're born of the water, the spirit. Then you become justified by faith. Huh? You have peace with God. So we have been justified. We have been chosen. We have been called. We have been predestinated. Everything about us will become right. We have been born again. Born of the water, spirit, and the blood. God bless you tonight in the name of Jesus. And it's also so good to listen to the word of God. Hey, get to your Bibles. Uh, it's getting late. You know, and, and what the word of God. Pray and ask God. Find your way out. The way is there, but a lot of people can't find the way out. Because of God's prophets. Jesus talks about them. Peter talks about them. John talks about them. Apostles talk about them. False teachers and false prophets. And false doctrine. Let's get back to the word of God. 
word of God and the blood of Jesus. Help us and save We can make him because the rapture is about to take any time now. No man knows the day nor the hour. Let us be ready and fully prepared. Uh, not getting ready, but fully prepared. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So we here to uh, tonight. That's our meeting. Everybody listening wherever you are. Amen. But the word of God is rich and it's and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword. It's in the dividing asunder, a soul and spirit will have to join and marrow. Turn off the thoughts and intents of all. Jesus, thank God I just glowed in fire. Father, we thank you. Lord, for this speed is so went so quick. Lord Jesus, time you with you, time is moving because you don't live in time. You will have eternal God. But eternal thank you. The word of God must do be a doer of your word, not just to be here only. Not to use our own strength and ability, and uh, um, by might, or by political power. Holy Jesus. Amen. So good to see Sister Eric. Sister Eric, God bless you. Sister Annette uh, McCallum, God bless you in the name of Jesus. Brother Fabian and Sister Yvonne. And whosoever I am. Monica, amen. God bless you all tonight. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Keep praying one for the other. And let us keep the word of God going. And we mustn't stop. Live it. Teach it. The Lord commanded us to do that. And let his will be done. In Jesus. Amen and amen. And now may the abiding grace of our Lord. Have a God and our faithful fellowship, communion of the Holy Ghost, the comfort, as you may and abide in your soul until Jesus come again. And every amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. Glory be to God. And our time is we meet again in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah.